Hey guys, welcome back to another Easy Game Mechanic tutorial. So I got a suggestion in my Discord from Jacob11. I'm the guy who asked for a pogo stick mechanic and you told me to leave it here. So there you go, thanks. And if you do end up doing it, thanks. Smiley face. Well Jacob11, this is how we do it. At the moment, I have two objects on the screen. I have a player character which has the platform behavior. It has an instance variable, but we don't need that because that's left over from a previous tutorial. I also have a ground sprite, which is just a tile background, and that has the solid behavior. So if I test the game now, I can use the arrow keys and I can just move the little guy around as per the default movement keys. So in order to get a pogo stick mechanic working, we need to be applying a Y vector every time the sprite makes contact with the ground. So if I start this guy in the air, just for demonstration purposes, and we go to the event sheet and we add an event and we say player character and then we say on collision with another object and that object is going to be the ground which is the tile background. Then we go back to the player and now we can apply the Y vector which is basically a movement and the Y axis is up and down. Now, if you want to move up on the y-axis, you need to make it a negative number. And if you want to move down on the y-axis, you need to make it a positive number. So we're going to be moving up every time we bounce. So let's say up by 150. So now you can see that he's kind of moving up and down quite frantically. He did fall a little bit slower and he's kind of bouncing. We can still move him from side to side now. But effectively, what's happening is every time he's hitting the ground, it's triggering that event. And that action is playing, which is moving him up. We can still... Well, we actually can't jump. We could jump if we timed it exactly when he's touching the floor, but because we can't jump in midair, that pretty much disables the jump. Now that's a little bit fast for my liking, and that's gonna to be to do with the gravity. So we can go back to the player sprite here, and we can come over to the left-hand side in the properties, and we can change the gravity from one uh, 1,500 to 1,000, and that will slow down significantly his jumping speed because there's less pull down towards him. Now presumably you're going to want to be able to jump when you're bouncing and due to the nature of the platform behavior you're not going to be able to do that through the the, uh, the standard arrow key jump keys. So we're going to need to set it up as a vector again. So let's go and add an event and if you haven't already done so add the keyboard. I've already added mine. You can add it by double clicking and coming down to inputs. You can add the keyboard then we're going to add an event, we're going to say keyboard, and we're going to say on key pressed, and we're going to say the W key, because we're going to use the W, A, S, and D keys to move. I'm going to copy those out two more times. We're going to say A for the second one, and D for the third one. For A and D, we're just going to simply move the character left and right. That's quite simply simulate control left for A, and I'm going to hold down control and drag that down to D, and I'm going to make that right. Now, when we press the W key, we don't want to be simulating jump because if we do, we're going to have the exact same issue that we have with the default controls enabled. We're not going to be able to do that jump because the jump function or the jump ability only allows you to jump if the player is on the floor. So we're going to delete that one and we're going to go back and we're going to apply this Y vector again. So I'm going to hold down control and copy that up. And instead of 150, because we want this to be a jump, I'm going to double it up to 300. I'm also going to reduce the speed of this thing because moving left and right is quite fast at the moment. So let's reduce that down to 80. And if you test it, now when you push A and D, it doesn't move left and right very quickly. You have to keep pushing it. And the reason for that is we've put on W key pressed rather or A key pressed rather than if uh, A key is down because we're going to be holding it down. So go ahead and just change those to key is down and now we can move left and right and we can jump no matter where we are. Now the only issue you're going to have with this is it's going to enable infinite jumping. So I can simply just push it like Flappy Bird kind of style. I can just keep tapping it and I can jump in the air. So we're going to have to set a condition to tell the system when we want this command to trigger and when we don't want it to trigger. And before we continue with the video, just a massive thank you and a shout out to my wonderful Patreon and YouTube channel members, Fusil CC, Retro Galaxy, Fan Van, Olivia Bernier, Amari Lewis, Mark Games, Tor Hammock Alexanderson, Rob, Jared Dumont, Lighting Cat, 
Martin K, Julian Cruz, Raul San Gonzalo, and 60 Plus Game Dev. Thanks very much, guys, for supporting my game dev journey. And for more information about what's on offer on the Patreon, there's a link in the description. Now, there's a, a number of ways you can do this. You could just use the um, the grid, the X and Y coordinates. So you could just put a condition to say if the player is more than X, you know, a set number of pixels away from the floor, then don't trigger it. You could put just another sprite in here if you wanted to, uh, and you know, make that the kind of bounce zone. So if you're if you're overlapping that, then you can. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use, in, in the interest of not creating more sprites, I'm going to go ahead and use the first example. So I'm going to put a condition on this uh, W press. So in order to do that, just select the middle bit. If you click on the whole thing, it'll all go yellow. We just want this middle section here. Push C on the keyboard, and then that will bring you up a condition window. And now the condition that we want to implement is a distance condition. So we're going to check to see how far away from the floor the player is. So we're going to say player character. And we're going to compare the Y axes, which is up and down. And we're going to say if the Y axes is less than or equal to, uh, sorry, is greater than or equal to, and we're going to say tile background, which we've not renamed, which is the floor. We're going to say the tile background dot Y, and then we're going to add in a buffer zone. And I'm going to say minus eight. So effectively what I've done is I've said, we can only push that W command to, to add that minus 300 Y vector if the character is within the ground and then eight pixels above it, because we've added the minus, remember, which is moving up. So now I can push it as many times as I want to, but he's not going to infinitely jump. He's only going to be able to jump if I'm in that, that lower part of the movement. And you can change that to whatever you want. Like if you wanted a bigger zone, <clears throat> you would simply just change that to 16. That would effectively be the height of the player. And now you've got a little bit more leeway. And if you just leave it mildly, it just bounces. And that's all good and uh, works great. But there is one final little bug that we can address uh, if we want to be really good. And that is if we tap the jump button as he's falling into the zone, you see he doesn't quite touch the floor. Now you may well want that, that's fine. Uh, I personally don't think that looks very good. I think it should only be when he's on the floor. So I'm going to have to add a Boolean variable to the player to check whether we're falling or jumping. Now I know that we can do that by simply doing a check in the events, but I don't want to use it that way because if I do, I don't have control over when I say he's falling or not. Because he's constantly in a state of bounce, he could be falling here on these mini bounces, which would then prevent me from doing a jump and I'd effectively have to time it perfectly for when he hits the ground. So I want to have full control over when I tell the system he's falling or jumping. And I can do that with a Boolean. So I'm going to add an instance variable and I'm going to change that to Boolean. And I'm going to call this Boolean is jumping. And I'm going to set it to false initial value, which is this tick box. Just leave that blank. And that basically just says that there's a, there's a check on the player now, a yes or no check that says, is he jumping or not? And at the moment it's saying not. So I'm going to add that condition into my W press. So I'm going to push C on the keyboard. I'm going to go to the player character and I'm going to check now that Boolean. So I can come down to instance variable and say, is Boolean set is jumping and I'm going to invert it. So now this says I can push that W button and it will jump as long as he's close enough to the ground and we're not currently jumping. So all of these three things need to be true in order for that to work. So now because, because the Boolean has been set to false from the start, it's the same issue, nothing's really changed. So to fix this, we do this. Where the W key is pressed, if none of this is true, the first thing we do is we apply that vector, then we go to the player and we set that Boolean to true. So now he is jumping because we've pushed that button. If we do that, when we try and test the game again, it's only gonna allow us to perform one jump and then it's gonna be set to true and then none of this is gonna work. So what we need to do is add another event and say player character <clears throat> and we're going to say on landed. So every time he touches the floor, every time he lands, we're going to set that jumping variable back to false. I can jump, but it's not allowing me to bounce off of that invisible zone anymore. 
Now, before we finish, we're going to polish this up just a tad because there is something else we can add to this to make it just a little bit more pleasing to the eye. And if we can do things like that, then I always say we should. So I appreciate it if you've made it this far in the video and everyone does have a short attention span these days. If you found what you're looking for, feel free to log off. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that stuff. But if you want to know how to make this just a little bit better, then I'm just going to need another 60 seconds or so of your time. Let's go back to the event sheet and let's say if key A is down, play a character. We're going to go back and add another action and we're going to say play a character and we're going to set the angle. And we're going to set the angle to tilt him to the left or to the right if you're moving left or if you're moving right, which will then give the impression that he's forward moving or jumping forward into that space. Now, the way Construct deals with angles is zero is exactly uh, 90 degrees to the right, so a straight line off to the right hand side. 90 degrees is straight down, 180 degrees is behind you, and then 270 degrees is straight up. So 270 degrees would be straight up exactly where he is now. If we add, if we're pushing A, if we minus 10 from that at 260, that'll give him a slight tilt to the left. If I copy that down and change this from 260 to 280, that should give him a slight tilt to the right. Now, when we push A, he flips completely to the right, and if we push D, he kind of flips back. He's flipping, but the reason he's flipping is because, like I said before, Construct's angle system, zero is directly to the right. So what we need to do is go back into this sprite and rotate it so we're consistent with Construct's angle system. Now he's going to look weird when he starts, but as soon as I push the buttons, oh, he's flipped the other way. We need to flip him the other way. There we go. Now he's going to look weird from the start, but now he's tilting when we are holding down the button. But when we let go, he still faces one way. So we need him to straighten up if no keys are down. So let's go back in and let's add another event and say keyboard. And we're going to say key is down. And we're going to say A, and I'm going to copy and paste that, and we're going to say D. Now we're going to drag these into the same block. So I'm going to I'm going to take this little middle section here, and I click and drag it up, and delete that bottom empty event. So now this event says if A is down and D is down, but we want to invert that to say not down, which basically now says if A is not down and D is not down, then we can set the angle to to seventy. Now we tilt to the right, and now we tilt to the left. We can jump, we can jump tilted, and there we go. If you found the video useful, please do feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It doesn't cost anything, it helps me out tremendously. If you want to see more tutorials, subscribe. And if you've got a suggestion for a tutorial, I have a Discord. There's a link in the description, click on it, come join us. And there's a channel where you can leave your comments and suggestions for future Construct3 tutorials.